Hey there, welcome back to another video today of what I believe might be one of the most popular trim levels in the Santa Cruz lineup, the 2024 SL Activity Package. So for 2024, the Santa Cruz remains mostly a carryover from its introduction in 2022. However, across the lineup, there are some notable changes. For the SEL Activity Package in specific, it now gains the LED projector headlights standard across every Santa Cruz for 2024, dual zone automatic climate control, SEL and higher, the 10.25 inch infotainment system with dynamic voice recognition, and a new haptic feedback steering wheel that Hyundai has been rolling out across many of their 2024 models just to improve overall safety and driver assistance features. So that is everything that did change when it comes to the SEL Activity Package in specific. Now, if you wanna know everything that changed across every trim lineup, make sure to check out the dedicated changes video I have here on the channel where I go trim by trim telling you exactly what the differences are versus the 2023 models. Now finally when it comes to pricing it did increase across the board for the Santa Cruz lineup however some trims increased just a little bit more than others. The activity package part of the SEL went up $540 and the base SEL trim went up as well for a total increase of $1,760 over a 2023 equivalent vehicle which now brings the starting price of an SEL activity all-wheel drive to $35,895 including death destination. Now one thing I do want to discuss is that you can get these vehicles in front wheel drive as well starting with the 2023 model year and newer. So if you want an SE, SEL or SEL activity package those will be about $1,500 less than the MSRP that I just quoted for this vehicle. So if you're looking to save a little bit of money and don't need the all-wheel drive uh, the front wheel drive versions might be the way to go. But with all that information in mind let's not waste any more time take a look at what this SEL activity has to offer for just over $36,000. So the Santa Cruz in front of us is finished in the phantom black exterior with the black cloth interior. Now for 2024, Hyundai did revise the trim lineup a little bit, discontinued the SL Premium, which shared the exterior design with this one, and replaced it with the new XRT. So that means if you do opt for a Santa Cruz with the 2.5 liter turbo engine, uh, that will come with the new premium dark grille design and some of the other front bumper elements on the outside. It, but if you stick with the SE, SEL, or SL Activity Package, they will all look like this one right here. But at the front end of every Santa Cruz, this year you will find full LED lighting with your LED projector headlights and LED turn signals in that portion with your LED daytime running lights flanking either side of the front grille. Standard chrome Hyundai emblem with the satin chrome or the bright silver front grille design. Like I said, those other ones do get the darker, more premium look in my opinion. And down below on the front bumper, you do not have the radar for the adaptive cruise or any other textured elements at the very bottom. Uh, so this is kind of just the standard front end design. Coming around to the side of the Santa Cruz, you will find the standard matte black plastic flares around the wheel arches and lower door section with the textured elements and Easter egg at the very top of each flare. Coming to the wheels and tires, these are gonna be the standard 18 inch wheel design across, like I said, the SE, SEL, or SL activity. They're gonna be a satin black design with the machine accent finish wrapped in 245, 60, 18 inch Kumo Krugen HP 71 all season tires with a little bit of the triangle elements on the outside. You're gonna have body color mirror cast with your LED turn signal integration, no cameras or lights on the bottom. They are gonna be heated and it does have blind spot detection. You have these satin accented black door handles with standard proximity entry as Hyundai digital key is not available on this particular trim. And here from the side, you can see you do have these satin roof rails up top, part of the SL activity. This one does come with the single power sunroof like I mentioned, as well as the gloss black shark fin antenna a little bit farther back. Coming out back, you will find partial LED lighting for the LED running lights, but you will have incandescent brake and turn signals up top with your reverse lights a little bit farther down on the rear bumper. Integrated side step standard on every Santa Cruz, along with the Santa Cruz stamped into the tailgate. There's the rear backup camera along with your Hyundai logo here in the standard black plastic. H-Track badge, meaning it is all wheel drive. And the SEL activity does also add the integrated tonneau cover along with the manual rear sliding rear window. So that's gonna be the main differences out back for this package in specific. But uh, outside of that, most of the other Santa Cruz, of course, are gonna look the same on the exterior. So take a quick look at the window sticker. The SEL activity is a package on top of the base SEL. Hyundai doesn't typically do that except for just a few trim levels across many of their vehicles. But anyways, like I said, for 2024, they made several nice additions including the standard LED headlamps. The activity is certainly a nice value-oriented package to get a lot of nice equipment that is usable on a day-to-day -day basis, including the sunroof, the adjustable C-channel cleat rail system in the bed, uh, the power outlet, the dual 10 quarter inch screens on the inside, LED interior lighting, and the manual rear side glass, among a few other items. This one does have a few additional accessories on it, which brings the total MSRP to $36,440, including destination. 
Now take a look on the interior. This one has the black cloth interior, like I mentioned. Uh, however, a gray option is going to be available as well. Starting out here on the door panel, this is gonna be the more basic door panel design with a few less soft touch materials versus that of the top limited trim. So up top, you have the hard touch plastic accent, uh, then the gloss black that wraps into the top of the dashboard. This is gonna be textured hard touch plastics, and then this is gonna be your soft touch portion for your elbow. Power windows, mirrors, and locks with automatic front two windows, silver accent door handle pull, a good amount of lower door storage with the standard six speaker audio system. Coming to the driver's seat, this is gonna be a power driver's seat with two-way power lumbar. And there is the standard black seating surfaces with the kind of textured elements in the center. And there is the black dashboard. Now here on the inside of the SL Activity Package, it's gonna be mostly a carryover from the previous model years minus that new infotainment system, which we will get to in a second. In front of the driver, you're going to find a 10.25 inch fully digital color display that is controlled here on the right side of the steering wheel. You have your speedometer on the left, tachometer on the right, the fuel gauges, a coolant temp, odometer on the bottom left, fuel range on the bottom right. And in the center, that is the part that you can configure. So in front of us, we have some of these safety systems. You can put your trip information with MPG, the built-in navigation up here, as well as your all-wheel drive to see where the power is being distributed to, as well as your TPMS and a few other items. So overall, very familiar with this display and is very easy to read. Coming back to the steering wheel, this is gonna be the normal kind of plastic texture type steering wheel, so not leather wrapped, unfortunately. On the left side, you do have your audio multimedia controls. On the right side, you have your regular cruise control with lane fall assist. This does not have adaptive cruise. If you want that, you do need to step up to at least the XRT or higher. No paddle shifters on the back side. To the left, you have the automatic headlights with auto high beam assist. To the right, regular wiper stock. To the left of the steering wheel, you have your gauge dimming, LED bed lighting, as well as traction control off. Normal kind of plastic texture dashboard, so no soft touch materials there. And coming over to the infotainment system, this is one of the new features for this trim level, but not for the Santa Cruz in general. So this is the 10.25 inch infotainment system with built-in navigation, which means only wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay at the moment. There are rumors that they will support um, a wireless function via a software update in the future, but that is a little bit uncertain at the moment. You do have your integrated Hyundai driver profiles at the top, so you can personalize it for different drivers of the vehicle. Built-in maps, like I mentioned, uh, so you can view that via a split-screen functionality, which is fairly unique. You have uh, Sirius XM, AM, FM, USB, Bluetooth inputs as well. The voice memo, valet mode, quiet mode, and overall we are very familiar with this. The only change for 2024 is the addition of Blue Link Plus across the board, which means free for the first owner of the vehicle and expanded benefits for CPO and used owners as well as the 2024s become available on the used market. So below that, that means all the shortcut buttons as well as the dual zone automatic climate control are now going to be the touch sensitive type. So you don't have those physical buttons for the temperature like you do paired with the eight inch screen and the base SEL, these are all gonna be the touch capacitive type. USB-A charge and data ports below that with the 12 volt outlet. It does have the wireless charging pad, but this is not a Hyundai digital keypad because it does not have the appropriate equipment on the door handles. A little bit of additional storage space up there. You have the kind of textured plastic shift knob with the leather wrap shift boot. Behind that, you have your center differential lock for the all wheel drive to send power 50-50 front and rear, automatic vehicle hold, electronic parking brake, drive mode select, hill descent control, as well as you can pull up the rear backup camera on the screen if you would like. In terms of drive modes, we have normal, sport, smart, and snow drive modes, so the exact same as that of the Tucson. The SEL and higher will come with the heated front seats, which is very nice. You have a soft touch textured center armrest with integrated storage, no ports or lights inside. Up top, you do have the black headliner with the textured uh, material on it, Vandy illumination, manual dimming into your rear view mirror, Overhead Blue Link SOS passenger airbag sensor, overhead LED lighting because of the addition of the sunroof, and then you do have the power sunroof controls with the manual shade. So many Santa Cruz in the lineup will come with the sunroof. It's just the smaller single type that does retract and pop open. You can see it doesn't open very far, but does let in additional air and additional light here, especially for the front seat occupants. So overall, huge fan of the sunroof in a smaller vehicle like this, but that's a quick look at the front seat. Let's go ahead and take a look out back. So here in the back seat of the Santa Cruz, the materials will not carry through from the front, unfortunately. So as far as the door panel goes, it's gonna be completely 100% hard touch plastics with the silver accented door handle pole. And of course the integrated bottle storage because there's no center armrest. Cloth materials will be the same as the front, however, and they do lift up to reveal some additional storage space. 
Step and height is going to be fairly easy given the overall door opening and ride height, but the back seat is going to be a little bit on the smaller side. So there's a quick look at the dashboard. Out back in terms of amenities, this particular trim level does not receive many, so no rear AC vents, no USB charging. You have matte pockets on both of the front seats, which is nice. Uh, the seats do fit three across, no center armrest, and it does have the headrest that do retract upward if you need to adjust that. And the SL Activity does add the manual rear sliding window with the integrated rear defrost function, uh, which again is nice for allowing a little bit additional airflow. But like I said, no center armrest, which means the storage for the bottles is gonna be on the left and right door panels, which at least it does have that. Overhead LED illumination and integrated grab handles is gonna be about it as far as that goes. Behind my rough driving position, I would say I generally have about one, maybe two inches, depending on the driver. Beneath the seat, I have a good amount of foot room, which is very nice. In terms of headroom, that is not going to be an issue either with at least four or five inches of headroom. So overall, not too many amenities here in the lesser trims of the Santa Cruz lineup. If you do want that, you need to step up to the top limited. And overall space is gonna be a little bit on the smaller side as well, uh, but I would say fairly usable on a day-to-day -day basis. Now out back of the Santa Cruz, of course, we do have the integrated tonneau cover that does retract and the electronic release tailgate. This is gonna be a standard four foot bed across the board made of composite material, so no need for a bed liner. Uh, this one does have the integrated bed mat, which is an optional accessory. The SEL Activity adds the side bed rails, some more tie down points, as well as the 120 volt outlet, 400 watt here on the right side of the bed. In that storage compartment, you have additional LED lighting. Now that integrated tonneau cover does take up a little bit of additional space at the front of the bed. Uh, so you may not want to opt for this trim level if you do need the maximum space available in the Santa Cruz lineup, but I would say it is a very good option for keeping the bed Bed mostly dry. It is water resistant, not waterproof. Now underneath the floor of every Santa Cruz, you do have the integrated trunk, which has the hydraulic struts on the sides. It is fairly deep, great for tailgating, putting uh, ice and beverages in here, uh, or just storing other items you may not need on a frequent basis. It does have an integrated drain plug that drains out the bottom of the vehicle, and that is standard again on every single Santa Cruz. So overall, I would say it is a very usable space, just not the largest in the compact pickup truck segment for sure, uh, versus that of some of the other competitors. So wrapping up here on the passenger front seat, Materials are going to be the same as the driver's side, of course. This is just going to be a four-way manual seat, so no height adjustment, unfortunately. There's a better look at the dashboard. Glove box is going to be damped, but does not have any illumination inside. It is a very usable size for all of your original owner's literature and other stuff you may store in there. Uh, but overall, that's a quick look at the interior of the SEL Activity Package. Let's go ahead and pop the hood, see what powers this particular vehicle, and then go ahead and wrap up this video. So under the hood of the Santa Cruz SEL Activity Package, this is going to be the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine paired to an eight-speed torque converted automatic transmission. This puts out 187 horsepower and 178 pound-feet of torque either the, through the front wheels or all four wheels if you do select all wheel drive. And this is actually the highest trim level in the lineup to get the base 2.5 liter four cylinder with the eight speed torque converted automatic transmission. If you go to the Knight XRT or the Limited, that is paired to a 2.5 liter turbo and an eight speed wet dual clutch transmission. So if you're looking to do the uh, kind of off-road fun things without the dual clutch, uh, then the SL Activity package is definitely gonna be the one for you. So that's gonna do it for my quick walk around tour of the 2024 Hyundai Santa Cruz SEL with activity. If you guys enjoyed this video and or found something helpful, make sure to hit that like button below. It greatly helps out the channel in these videos. Subscribe if you guys are not already subscribed and make sure to stay tuned for additional content here on the 2024 Hyundai lineup. Now, as far as my quick thoughts and opinions here on the SEL activity package, well, I like the changes that they made for the Santa Cruz lineup in general for this year. It's about time some of these vehicles had LED headlamps as standard equipment and you didn't have to go to at least the SL Premium or the Top Limited to get that. Um, I really do like the larger infotainment system in this trim level in specific for the mid $30,000 price point. Yes, it doesn't support wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay yet. Hopefully it will in the future. Can't guarantee that, so don't quote me on that. Uh, but I do think the larger screen and some of the you know touch capacitive buttons look a little bit more premium. Although on a usability standpoint, I certainly do not prefer those touch buttons. I like physical buttons, so I'm glad they did that in the all new next generation Kona, which I did recently get hands on time with that. So make sure to check that video out if you're interested. Uh, but the SEL activity is a good value oriented trim love to give you a lot of the nice amenities that you want on a day to day basis, including heated seats, the blue link functions, many of the Hyundai safety systems, although it would be nice to see adaptive cruise control and uh, some of the other systems added for this package. Sunroof's nice, you know, you have the sliding rear glass, the tonneau cover out back and the uh, power outlet and stuff like that. So 
Overall, I really do like this particular trim. Think it's a great option for the mid $30,000 price point. But anyways, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this particular vehicle down in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of the changes for the 2024 Santa Cruz. Um, are you comparing this versus the other main compact pickup on the market? Or is there one or the other that you would prefer um, if you're looking at a vehicle like this? So let me know your general thoughts down in the comment section below. Overall, I appreciate the continued support here on the channel. And as always, hope to see you guys in the next one.